Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to Bible study. Um, again, we really apologize for the late start tonight. Uh, had some little issues getting here. Of course, you know, traffic would not let me be great, but nevertheless, we are here as promised at 715. So uh, going to give us a minute or two for everybody to come on in because we are here. Uh, give us a minute to come on in. And then we'll go ahead and get started with our Bible study. Let me adjust my angle just one quick. There we go. All right. It's, all right. All right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and start tonight. Uh, I see we have four people on. I want to say good morning to you all. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. I want y'all to like, to share, uh, comment, uh, let your amens flow out. Uh, I need to, I, we need to see all of that tonight. So if y'all do me a great favor, I'll greatly appreciate that. And just uh, and let's let's be interactive tonight in this Bible study. Uh, let's us first of all, let's go ahead and bow for a word of prayer. And then we're going to get right into our teaching tonight. Let's pray. Oh, most gracious and eternal God, our father, we bless your name. God, we thank you so much for this opportunity of sharing in your word. God, I pray, oh God, that you would help us. Oh God, to hey, to have an ear of what you want us to hear tonight. God, I pray, oh God, that. That this word, the seed of this word is going to fall on good soil, God, and that it will produce an abundant crop, Father. Lord, I pray, Father, for those who are watching tonight. I pray for those who are uh, on their way, God. I pray for even those who are watching the replay of this Bible study. Lord, I pray that your presence will be with them just like it is with us right now who are alive. And it's in Jesus' name we pray that every heart say amen. Amen. All right, church, we're going to get right into our Bible study. I see you all this evening. Uh, Deacon Ray Kelly, I see you. Sister Taylor, God bless you. I see you all coming in. Uh, we're going to talk tonight. Once again, as you know, we're teaching. Uh, this is our stewardship series that we're teaching on. And we're teaching on generous giving is equal to blessed living. That's what we're talking about. Um, and tonight, I want to just kind of deal with because uh, we talked a lot about just the, the giving portion of it. But um, I want to talk tonight about why we give, why we give. And as I talk about that tonight, there's a familiar passage of scripture that comes from the gospel according uh, to St. Luke chapter 6. And in St. Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says this. It says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Uh, I don't know if you all ever heard of this, but there's this law called the law of thermodynamics and or the laws rather of thermodynamics. And the first law of thermodynamics suggests that matter cannot be created or destroyed. And just like thermodynamics, there is a similar moral principle in the Bible about good and evil. What you put into God's creation uh, will come back for good or evil. What you add to the well-being of life on earth, you will receive in fulfillment. However, what you decide that you want to hook and crook and steal will be hooked and crooked and stolen back. So that's again, that's that uh, the law of uh, when you put something out, you get it back. So if I put good things out, I'm going to get good things back. If I put bad things out, I'm going to get bad things back. If I'm if I'm putting uh if I'm sowing generous seeds, I'm going to get generous seeds sown back to me. But yet if, I, if I'm always stealing, if I'm always uh trying to connive and trying to take from people, then ultimately somebody's going to take from me. And what I want us to understand tonight is that God desires to multiply good through us now while we're still on earth. And as a matter of fact, that's why he created the church. And this church is why giving is so important because when we give, we are able to enjoy him. And not only are we able to enjoy him, but we also bring that joy to others. So it's a joy when we give. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that tonight. Uh, as a matter of fact, the first thing that I'm going to look at tonight is, is actually four points I'm going to lift tonight. And it's not, we're not going to be long, but I want y'all to stay with me. And those who are in the comments, um, I didn't I didn't type too, too much in the uh, description. So if y'all would help me out for those who might have missed a point or who might be taking notes, 
I want y'all to help me out tonight. If y'all would just kind of be pastors, uh, personal secretaries, if y'all don't mind. Amen. All right. First of all, we wonder uh, why do we give? That's what we're talking about. Why we give? First of all, we give to be blessed. Number one, we give to be blessed. Uh, very familiar passage of scripture. We quote it all the time. Uh, as a matter of fact, we quote it every Sunday when, at giving time. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, which says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So we're talking about bringing the tithe into the storehouse. Okay, that's what he's saying. And, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, the earlier verses in this chapter. But right now where, uh, where it says, right, it says, bring the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. The King James Version says meat, but New King James says food. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out of, uh, for, uh, and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Now, church, in essence, what this what this text is saying right here is this: giving is not just about sacrifice. It's not just about sacrifice, but what it is is God's way of introducing to us, of formally introducing to us, the principle of sowing and reaping. That's what it is right there, sowing and reaping. You reap what you sow. Uh, if you don't sow anything, you're not going to reap anything. That's why it's important that, you know, even if you think about it in a practical sense, when the farmer goes out and he sows his seed, he's expecting to reap a harvest. But you can't expect to reap a harvest if you hadn't sown a seed. So if I am so if I'm if I'm just sitting around looking at my garden and I haven't planted any seeds, then I can't expect anything to come out of that. But I know that if I planted seed, I know I'm going to reap the harvest from that. And and here we send and God makes a promise to us here in the book of Malachi where he says, uh, it says he says, says the Lord of hosts, if I will, he said, try me, try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. So watch this. That means that when I give, that means what happens is God is going to, he says he's going to open the windows of heaven and he's going to pour out a blessing. And the blessing is going to be so great that we're not even going to have room enough to receive it. Uh, you ever met somebody, and a lot of wealthy people are like this, where where it's like no matter how much they give, they keep getting things back in return. No matter how much they sow, they keep uh, sowing things back in return. Now, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not an Oprah Winfrey fan. I'm not an Oprah fan at all. But one thing I read in the article that Oprah said was, she said, it seems like every time, it's like the more that she gives to people, the more she gives back. It's like, the, you know, she constant, she's constantly giving and giving and giving. And yet, you know, she still has a whole lot of a whole lot more stuff that she can't get rid of because she's given so much and she keeps getting stuff back. It's like it's like the more I give, the more I get back. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that's the kind of problem I don't mind having. I don't mind having a problem where, oh, my God, I'm just giving so much. I just I can't I, I you know, I, I got so much stuff now. I can't even, you know, give away stuff because it seems like I'm always getting things back. Do you not realize that when we give these are the kinds of blessings that God stows, he, that the God bestows on us because we are practicing this principle of sowing and reaping. So I give to be blessed. And I got to also help us understand because I can't look at verse 10 without looking at verses 8 and 9 in Malachi because I want us to understand that God does not bless robbers. Did y'all get that? God does not bless robbers. Let me show you in the text right here, Malachi. We, I'm going to go right to it. Malachi chapter 3 says right here, I'm going to read verse 8 and 9. It says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. This is not David's talking. This is scripture right here. And according to verse 9, listen to this. It says, you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me even this whole nation. So 
when we rob God, and let, let me help y'all understand something about robbers. See, because, see, it's one thing to be a thief, but it's another thing to be a robber. See, a thief, that's the difference between the two. See, a thief will steal something when you're not looking. See, a thief, somebody, I can walk out of this office right now. Somebody can come in here and take something out of here, go away. I, I would never see the person come in or go out. That's a thief. But see, a robber will steal your stuff right there in front of your face. If y'all ever, y'all ever, y'all watch the news, armed robbery. These are people who are robbing people. You right, you point them, you hold, hold them at gunpoint and you're robbing them right there in their face. You're just robbing them. Like, like the old folks say, you're robbing them blind. That's a robber. So think about it. When we don't bring the tithe, when we don't bring the offering, the scripture says, again, David didn't say it. This is scripture. The Bible says that we are robbing God. God, how have I robbed you? You robbed your tithes and your offering. You're basically taking what's already mine to begin with. God will not and cannot bless robbers. So I got to understand that I give to be blessed. Watch, let me move on to the next thing here because not only do I give to be blessed, but I give to become like Christ. I give to become like Christ. Acts chapter 20, verse 35 says this. This Jesus says that everything I did, well, I'm sorry, this, uh, Jesus is going to quote, he's going to quote what Jesus said in here in just a second. He says, and everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words, watch what Luke writes here. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. We hear that all the time. It's more blessed to give than to receive, especially around this time of year. We're entering the Christmas season, the Thanksgiving season, the spirit of the, the spirit of giving and, and you know just giving gifts and all of that. And the first thing people say all the time is more blessed to give than to receive, especially when they want something. You're going to hear that quite a bit. Yeah, so, so the, and, but did y'all not realize that Christ said that himself? It's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, now watch this because I want us to understand something. Although it's very tempting to look for a return on your investment, generosity is more about what God is doing in us through giving than about knowing exactly how that gift is going to be used. Let me say it again. Although it's very, it's tempting to look for a return on your investment. I'm putting money in this, man. I want to see something come out of it. I'm putting, I'm, I want to see what's, what's going to happen with this money I'm putting in here. I, you know, uh, uh, yeah, even though, yeah, you want to see a return on your investment. I know most of us do, but generosity is more than about what God, it's more about what God is doing rather in us through giving than about knowing how the gift is going to be used. So, uh, you know, the age old, the, the age old phrase in the, in the black Baptist church on the black church period is where's the money going? As soon as, a, as soon as somebody asks for a special, even not even with the special offer, even just with the tithe and offering, people don't know where's the money going. People looking around to see, all right, let's see, are they, are they building something around here? Are they putting something new? Are they remodeling, doing reconstruction? Well, they, I just want to know where the money, where the money going? What the money, and you know, and one thing to look, I don't mind telling you where the money's going. That's that's not a big deal. The money going to pay some bills. That's where it's going. But you know, we we always we we come into giving with this mindset of uh, what they doing with my money. Can I can I help you with something else? Technically, it's not our money. It's God's money. So it's it's, it's his money, and he's gonna do whatever he want to do with his money in in his house. Just like you do whatever you want to do with your money in your house. Can y'all say amen to me tonight? So, so when I talk about this, this giving, I'm, I'm not so much concerned about where the money's going, but I'm more concerned that my giving, hear me tonight, that my giving is what God, God is doing something in my life through my giving. Now, I had about 15 people on here. Now I'm down to 13. I guess I'm turning somebody off. Amen. But this, I'm just giving y'all scripture tonight. That's all I'm doing. That's what this thing is about. Now, now, so not only do I give to be blessed, not only do I give to become more like Christ, but watch this. I give, or we give rather, because we get it. We give because we get it. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six through eight, Paul says this. He says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. 
And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let the verse seven says, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Watch this. Not grudgingly or of necessity or under compulsion. Like one, uh, one version of scripture says, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse eight says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all, all always having all sufficiency and all things may have an abundance for every good work. Did y'all get that? Did y'all get that? We give because we get it. We get it. Y'all and, and, and the, the, the faith confession we make of our offering on Sundays, that's what it's coming. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. That's where it comes from. Verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency and all things may have an abundance for every good work. Uh, when I when, and when I said the words they get it, we give because we get it. I said that like I said it to kind of make this point right here. You ever heard somebody who articulated something very well, and you think you're my man? They get it. They really do get it. They they get it. Man, they 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 you know it's like they they know how to say things the right way. They get a good understanding of what you're trying to help them to understand. They get it. One of the blessings to me as a preacher, as a pastor, when you preach and teach the word and people are taking their word and applying it to their lives and you can see them being blessed because they're applying the word to their life, that lets me know, hey, they get it. They get it. So what God loves mostly about the cheerful giver is that they get it. What is it, pastor? That's a very good question. It is the connection between spiritual growth and generosity. Y'all do that as a connection that I'm not going to get back into what we talked about last week about being stingy. And I'm not going to get into that. But, but you know, but you, everybody know, y'all know very well that there are a lot of people who uh, they're spiritually, they think they're spiritually mature, but they're really not. Because if you're stingy and you're withholding the tithe and the offering, that means that you're about at the same level as a babe in Christ. But spiritually mature people understand the principle of sowing and reaping. Spiritual, spiritually mature people understand the principle of giving. And, and, and I say that because, see, what God, uh, what I want us to understand this. See, see, giving, God uses giving. It's, it really is a blessing to the giver within itself. It's a blessing to the giver because it's teaching us as givers. It's teaching us something. But and, and I don't want us to ever think that, you know, we're we're um, talking bad about those who are not in position to give. That's not what I'm doing. That is not the uh, that's not the, the, the point of my message right here, because because it, it's not it's not as though those who are, are not in position to give don't get it. That's not what I'm, I'm saying. But it's a lot more people. Listen to me who can and don't. And those who think they can't, but probably could. Y'all, I, I say that too fast. Let me slow down. There are a lot more people who can give and don't. And there are some people who think they can't give, but they probably could. The one of the, uh, the biggest things that people used to say, and I used to say it too, I was, I've been guilty of it. I can't afford to give. I got all these bills, man. I got a mortgage to do. I, I, I got I to make sure these kids got something to eat. I, I can't, oh, Rev, I can't afford to give, man. I can't, man, this little check I got, I can't afford to give. But the truth of it is, you really can't afford not to give. And see, I had to learn that lesson the hard way. No, you, you, your people say, I, I can't afford to, no, baby, you can't afford not to give. Because no matter what you, you have to, of course, you give according to what God has given to you. So you, of course, if you're only making a uh, minimum wage salary, you're not expected to give like somebody who has a six figure salary. Okay? So you you just you give on the level that you're on. So that means if you only made ten dollars, your ten percent of that ten dollars is what? One dollar. And you give, but guess what? Your and God will honor that one dollar just like he would the ten thousand with somebody who made the hundred thousand. Y'all are y'all hear me tonight? He'll honor that. I hope my math is right. If I'm not, y'all tell me. But yeah, God will honor, he'll honor that because he blesses you because you give on the level that you are. And don't make the same mistake I made thinking, well, because so-and-so gave all this money, I feel like I got to give all that money. But so-and-so gave based on their income. 
And I had to and I had to pray that God delivered me from having the mindset of, oh, I can't, man, I just, I'm just not gonna give because I can't give like them. And 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 people used to come. I've been in church all the time. People say, I'm gonna sow a a, a, a thousand dollar seed in Jesus' name. And then you're like, oh well, and you know, you got all you got is your ten dollars. And you put your little ten dollar offering up, he's sowing a thousand. They don't need my little, I'm gonna go put this up. This is a shame. Don't do that. Because just like God honored that thousand dollar seed, he's gonna honor your ten dollar seed. Oh, y'all hear me? He's gonna honor it. I, I promise you, he's gonna honor it. We just have to uh, we have to get delivered from that. Oh my God, I can't give like so and so. Because again, that is uh, that's the measure that God has blessed them. So we have to look at the measure that God has blessed us and act accordingly. And 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 let's and again, and we got to use wisdom with this thing too, because all, God is only asking us to give, of course, out of the ten percent, the tithe. He's asking us to give that. God is not asking you to sow your whole paycheck. And if he tell you to do it, that's a different story. But he's not saying every week you come to church, you got to give your whole check. All he wants is 10%, the tithe. And of course, the offering. See, the tithe already belongs to him. But whatever we give above that, that's the offering. And that's where the blessings start coming in. Are y'all with me tonight? Yeah, so, so I give because I get it. And the last thing is this, and I'm almost done, y'all. We give to worship God. Let's go back and review. We give to be blessed. We give to become like Christ. We give because we get it and we give to worship God. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 16 says, but do not forget to do good and to share for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So what the Hebrew writer is saying here is he's speaking of giving as being a discipline. Now he could have equated Giving, he could have equated this with doing good. He could have equated that with anything. He could have said, "Do good to pray. Do good. Do good and pray. Do good and study the Bible. Do good and volunteer down at the church." But no, the Hebrew writer says, "Do good." He says, "Do good with and share. Do good and share. Do not let me not misquote. But do not forget to do good and share. Share means what? It means to give." That's what he's saying, because what I got to understand is that giving is at the heart of doing good. Yeah, we yes, it's a blessing. You gotta, you gotta pray, read your Bible, volunteer at the church, do all those great things. Just be nice to folk. That, that's good. Yeah, that's good. But giving church is at the heart of doing good. And I'm going to close by saying this. God, we said all the time, God is not a respecter of persons, and he's not. Because what he does for one, he'll do for you too. But God he is a respecter of principles. Again, God is not a respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of principles. And the principle is this, that when I obey him in my giving, he rewards me for my obedience. But again, going back to what I said before, we shouldn't go, we shouldn't give simply to get something in return. That's not why we give. That's not the purpose of it. But generous giving is one of our responsibilities as believers. So when I put money in the offering plate, when I put uh when I put money online, when I do text to give, when I do the cash app, I'm not doing it to get something in return, to get something out of it. Okay, Lord. All right, side and gave. So what you gonna do for me? All right, now, Lord, you know I did. You know I got this last little money I got. I'm giving it to you. So, so all right, Lord. Okay, all right. Okay, God, what you got for me? That's not what this thing is about. But it is a part of our responsibility. It is a part of our obligation as believers. If we're Christ followers, that's what it's about. And that's that's absolutely right. When I obey Him in my giving, He will reward me. Many of you all, some of you all who watch me right now, you might be struggling with this. You might be struggling financially. Have you ever thought to think about your giving, where you stand with your giving? You might say, it seems like I can't never make, I seen my, talking about making ends, my, my ends can't even see each other. I'm, I'm barely, like I'm like on, the, on good times, I'm keeping, barely keeping my head above water. What's your giving looking like? 
What's the what's the tide looking like? What's your, what look, I challenge you, look at your giving statement from last year. We everybody in the church who requests one got a giving statement for 2020. Look at it. How's it looking? When you went to your tax man or your tax woman and you turned in that contribution statement, could you do it proudly? Are you looking like, oh, you know, because if you work a full-time job and you didn't give but $40 all last year, that math is just not something just, it ain't adding up. So I challenge us tonight. I challenge us that when it comes to our giving, let's look at why we're giving. Let's look at why we're giving. Yes, I know we said we're not giving to get something in return, but the bottom, but that, I never said you're not going to get anything in return because, again, going back to my first point, you get to be blessed. That's a promise in the word of God. He promises he'll open up the windows of, he uh, windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, one, to you, where, one where you won't have room enough to receive. I give to become like Christ. Christ was a giver. Yeah, I, I give because I get it. And then I give to worship God. Giving is a form of worship. I know, you know, we come in and we sing on Sundays and we're lifting our hands and, you know, we're uh, sitting in the atmosphere for worship. Do you not know that giving is just as important in worship as lifting your hands and singing? Because when we lift our hands, that's an act of surrender. When we open up our pocketbooks, that's an act of surrender also. When we go on our cash app, when we go to our online giving platform, that's a form of surrender also. And I just want a church, I just want to see us get it. That's all I want. I want us to get it when it comes to giving. And I'm really looking forward to I believe that God is going to challenge some people's hearts. And I believe that some people are going to step it up in their giving. And it's going to show. And then because it's showing, I'm, you know, people are going to get blessed. I can see people getting raises, promotions. So you might be on here believing God for buying a home, but it doesn't happen until we get serious about giving. And I will tell you, as long, and let me say this to you husbands, all my husbands, all, not my husbands, but all the husbands who are online. Let me say this to you all. Even if your wife is a giver or a tither, but you're not. Even though she's giving, you still bring a curse on your house. Uh-oh. Y'all, I just lost about five people right there. See, because remember, men, we are the head of our households. So no matter how much Latoya is giving, if I'm not giving, there's going to be a curse on my house. And there was a season in my life as a Christian and, and one short season as a preacher where I was not giving, I was not tithing. And as long as I did not tithe and give an offering, I stayed broke. Oh my God. And my pastor, he has the exact same testimony we have. Because, and I feel myself sounding just like him because he used to tell us the same thing all the time. But when he was sharing his testimony with us, that made me motivate, that made me step it up in my giving. And when we got serious about it, to start bringing the tithe and the offering, then that's when God started blessing. That's when we were able to, you know, get a, you know nice vehicles. That's when we were able to live in a nice home. That's when we were able to, you know, buy some, you know, some nice decent clothes. And we're not rich, but we're not dirt poor either, because God has stayed true to His word, and just like He did it for us, He'll do it for you. And let all God's people say Amen, Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and shut it down tonight, y'all. I thank y'all so much for being here in our Bible study. Thank God for each of you. I pray that this word blessed you. And as we talked about giving, uh, once again, we have giving platforms tonight. You can sow a seed into this ministry. Amen. You can go to paradisembc.org or you can uh, go to our, our cash app, uh, dollar sign PMBC3605. Uh, we have our text to give number 281667. 4886, those are our giving platforms online. You can give, you, you can give, you can sow. Uh, you might have missed the opportunity to bring your tithe and your offering this past Sunday. This is your chance to do that. You can do that right here tonight. You might have missed your opportunity. You might have uh, you might have brought the tithe Sunday, but you want to give a liberal offering. You can do that tonight. I encourage you all to sow a seed. 
I encourage you all to sow a seed. As we close out, thank you so much for uh, sharing that information, Sister Ty. As we close out, I uh, just want to invite you all once again to come be a part of our worship experience. We are here in, on the campus in the Sanctuary of Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. Every Sunday we're here. We have our awesome Sunday school ministry at 930 on Sundays. And we have a worship experience at 11 o'clock. Uh, we invite all of y'all to come and be a part. Man, we had a great time this past Sunday. A uh, great, great number of people were here this past Sunday, too. And I'm looking forward to us seeing even more. Uh, and we're, and it's still, we're doing it safely, y'all. We're doing it safely. So uh, don't, don't feel like, oh, my God, it's going to be too many people. But after we've seen this incident that happened last week out there at NRG, I don't think that should be an issue for anybody. Amen. And let's be in prayer for that situation. Just a very uh, unfortunate situation to happen. Be in prayer for that. Uh, also want to continue to be in prayer for the Kelly family. As you know, uh, our beloved Reverend Rob Kelly, uh, God called him home on this past Sunday morning. Uh, we have uh, arrangements have been, a uh, date has been set. Uh, there will be a memorial service on the 19th here at the church. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, November 19th at the church, here at the church. I believe it's seven and also the services will be on Saturday viewing it uh, Saturday the 20th, November 20th, not this weekend, but next weekend, November 20th um, at uh, viewing from 10 to 11. The uh, home going celebration will begin at 11 a.m. So we want to keep that family in prayer. Uh, we're going to go ahead and close out tonight. Uh, again, if you were blessed by this message, I want you all to share it, comment. And even if you're watching it after after hours or after we uh, broadcast it, still comment as if you're watching it live. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, God, that you would bless us indeed. We ask you to enlarge our territory. We ask for your hand to be upon us. We ask you to keep us from all evil. Grant unto us grace, peace, mercy, and safety as we go to our various destinations. And it's in Jesus' name we pray that all God's people say amen. Amen. Relationships, restoration, renewal, paradise go, paradise go, paradise go. May God bless you. And if the Lord says the same, we'll see you right here on the campus or online Sunday morning, Sunday school, 930, and worship at 11. Until then, you all be blessed. All right, I'm going to turn, turn the camera off. All right. Amen.